Today we're going to be taking a first look at Falcon, a WordPress optimization and tweaking plugin for WordPress, which is completely free in the same kind of vein as admin site enhancements and WP Extended. There are various other plugins out there that do the same kind of thing. Those are the two we're going to take a comparative look at today. So the cool thing about this is you can download it and install it, or you can just go and have a live preview and have this set up in a matter of seconds in the WordPress playground. All you need to do is click on live preview. And after a few seconds, you'll have a temporary copy of WordPress all set up and the plugin installed ready to go. So this is what you see when you log into it for the first time. Things are broken down across the top into the various different sections. There are some overlaps here. And then you've got the various different options you can enable and disable each one of these different sections. Before we take a look at jumping into these though, let's take a quick look at its competition. So when you take a look at ASE or Admin Site Enhancements, you'll see it's a similar setup, just a little different in how it's laid out. Things are broken down into segments on the left-hand side, and again, we've got those radio boxes to enable and disable features. This is the free version, so there may be things locked behind the Pro Paywall inside this particular panel. Now, if we jump over into WP Extended, you can see, again, we've got a very similar setup. However, this does look a lot more polished, and this is a comment that I've raised several times when I've looked at WP Extended in comparison to other plugins. Again, going back to that same point, once you've set things up, does it really matter? Generally, not so much so. So what options do we have? I'm not going to go and break these all down. We're going to quickly go through and see some of the options here. But you're going to find very familiar options. So things like, do you want to disable Gutenberg? If you're using a page builder and you don't have any need for it, disable it, get that junk out of there. If you want to enable it, you obviously can do. You can disable things like your heartbeat and so on. Various different things here will allow you to optimize how WordPress works. So if you're working on shared servers and maybe you don't have the most resources, you maybe want to disable various different things here to keep your not only WordPress light and nimble, but also your database and so on. So for example, we don't use comments in a lot of sites that I build, so we'll disable things like that. We wouldn't want to disable embeds because you want to embed things like YouTube videos and so on. But again, if you don't want that, you can disable it. Revisions, do you want to disable that? What I would like to see here, though, is not just a carte blanche disable or enable. I'd rather see disable or enable, and then you can choose how many revisions you want. So we could say we want to enable revisions for maximum of five, for example. That is a kind of a little bit limiting. Uh, then you've got things like, do you want to disable the cron job? Block external requests, search only in posts. So if you're running just a blog or a news site that only use posts, not pages for anything in particular, you could set this to search only inside posts. And you can then do things like put the site into maintenance mode. So if you're making changes to it, you don't want people to be able to access it, maybe change things on there if they've got access as editors and so on. You can pop this into maintenance mode and kind of lock things out. If you enable that, you can see there's no other options here. It's basically just enabled, hit your save changes. We're now in maintenance mode. Now, if we compare some of the same options to ASE, you'll see if we come into, for example, optimizations, we've got revision control here. If we enable this, we can now choose how many revisions and based upon the various different sort of sections of our site, posts, pages, and so on, how many revisions do we want to make available and things like that. So we've got more granular control here, so it makes more sense. Again, remember, this is the, only the free version, so I'm not paying anything here for this access. Now, if you enjoyed this kind of content and you'd like to be notified when new content like this is added, why not go down there and hit that subscribe button? While you're down there, why not give it a thumbs up as well to tell YouTube you like this kind of content? However, if you don't like it, well, you can hit the thumbs down button twice as that works pretty well too. Anyway, let's get back on with this coverage of Falcon. Now let's jump over to the header section. These, again, very common, removing feed links, getting rid of the RSD, removing the Windows Live Writer, those kinds of things, to remove short links, REST API links, and so on. So if you don't need those functions, and as you can see, everything is disabled by default, then you can leave those as they are. Jumping into media, for example, we now can control how media is sort of controlled inside you. So do you want to remove the query string from JavaScript and CSS files, removing the jQuery migrate? If you don't use jQuery, you don't really need that function. So there's various different options here, disabled emojis and so on. Again, these will optimize WordPress if you don't use these and have no need for them. Disable them because that's just code being stripped out that you don't need. Just makes it a lot lighter. 
and things like disable thumbnail generation. Then if you want to, you can handle asynchronous loading of your CSS. You can drop extra information inside there. Jump into email. You can remove, remove the admin email confirmation and various different things. If you want to enable SMTP, you can do that and pop in your details there. In general, I would recommend SMTP for pretty much any WordPress website. It just gives you a better level of control of your email, and it's also much more reliable. So again, you can set that option inside you. You can set your test email. You can change the default email, which is something that's kind of useful. Can get a little bit annoying. You might not want it to go to your main email address. You can change those things here. Come into your admin, for example, and you can see we can change things here. So removing the update nag. So when there's an update available inside WordPress, you may use an external service to handle as updating. You may want to sort of keep things there. And then your users, when they're logged into their website, you are handling that through maintenance. You don't want them to see those update nags. You can do that kind of thing. A lot of this comes down to not just optimizing your websites, but also setting things up in a way that if you're working with clients and you handle things through a maintenance plan, you don't want them to see things and accidentally click on things they don't really need to be sort of digging into, things like updates and so on. So you can see we can set things inside here. Finally, we've got our security. So again, things like disabling the REST API, removing XML, RPC, and so on. You can block AI bots from here as well, and you can force people to log into the website. So once you've made those changes, hit Save Changes, and you are done. All in all, it's a pretty simple, stripped back, bare bones plugin. Personally, I still think you're better off with something like admin site enhancements because the free version of this gives you pretty much all the same things, but more granular level of control. But if it includes what you want and you like the developer behind Metabox and Slim SEO and so on, and you want to support their work, there's nothing wrong with that. You might want to check it out. I would also recommend taking a look at WP Extended. Try the free version out, see how you get on with it, see if that has the features that you want included. There are some things missing here in the free and the pro in comparison to ASE and to Falcon. For example, the revision management we just took a look at. While Falcon has basic revision on or off, and ASE has revision on and off, and the number of revisions you want, there's nothing like that in WP Extended at this point in time. Falcon is an interesting little plugin, is absolutely free. I'm sure this will grow and expand as more people adopt it. You might want to check it out. Check it out with the live preview so you can try it yourself inside a WordPress playground. But give it a go, see what you think of it, and let me know down below. As always, all applicable details are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.